So we've reached the limits of the, the ability to extract more and more fish from the ocean. And fish have been uh, part of our diet for thousands of years. Now, aquaculture is not a new concept. Um, people have been farming fish since two or 3,000 BC. At least there are records of people farming fish for, for that long, probably longer. Um, aquaculture has uh, got to be talked about in terms of fisheries management because it does impact on wild stocks. So what's the situation? Uh, the world's population expected to grow from 7.1 billion uh, to 8.3 billion in 2030, which is not that far away really. That's uh, 14 years from now, 8.3 billion people. And so right now we catch 80 to 100 million tons per year sustainably. That's uh, yet to be seen whether that will be able to be uh, carried on. But we expect a demand of 150 to 160 million tons with that 8.3 billion people. So how are we going to make up this 50 to 80 million ton shortfall? So what do you think? Is aquaculture the answer to our fisheries problems worldwide? Can we, um, like they did in the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, um, decide to uh, or figure out a way to ramp up production uh, so we vastly increase the amount of food that's available from the ocean. So it's not, uh, here's a definition of what it is um, from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, which uh, is a big statistics keeper. It's the farming of aquatic organisms, including animals and plants. So it's not just fish. If you look at this area here, this is an algal grow out area where they're um, growing algae. So if you drink a uh, drink with spirulina in it, that will have been a cultured algae. And that's part of the aquaculture production. So uh, some other definitions. So it implies intervention in some form in the rearing process to enhance production. The whole reason for aquaculture is to try to grow more than you could get out of the out of a natural system, <clears throat> and so the goal is to increase production. So you can increase food supply. Um, there are people who farm crabs by keeping them in little pens around mangroves, and then just putting food scraps in in those areas, and um, that they. Um, concentrate the crabs, but the crabs do fine because they're supplementing their feeding. Uh, you can protect things from predators, and once you release them from predation, the population should hopefully grow. And we can get as sophisticated as uh, genetic alteration of organisms, like has been done with salmon. Um, Farming it also implies individual or o corporate ownership of the stock being cultivated. So if you don't own the stock that you are improving the production, uh, then there's no point. So if somebody else can gain the benefit of your work, uh, then you have um, not gained anything for yourself. Uh, so people need to own the stock that they're putting the work into, otherwise they won't do it. So two definitions, extensive, all right, so this is very much like um, I was talking about with the, with uh, putting crabs, that, or wild caught crabs into pens and mangroves. This is where you only um, practice the life, the uh, aquaculture for part of the organism's life cycle. Uh, you might capture a fish uh, and then put it into a pen and grow it for uh, uh, until it reaches marketable size. Um, or you can have intensive aquaculture, in which case you are responsible for the entire life cycle of the uh, of the animal. So you, with a pawa hatchery or a pawa um, aquaculture system, you'll have brood stock. You'll get those to spawn, you'll grow out the larval uh, dispersal phase to settlement and then 
grow them up to marketable size, and that would be intensive aquaculture. Okay, here's a definition that you need to know is polyculture. Okay, polyculture is culturing several organisms in the same area. So this is trying to um, to uh, mimic a natural system in which you have various uh, levels of the food web working together. So tilapia and watercress would be one of them. So in other, other parts of the world where tilapia are able to be grown, then the tilapia are put into the ponds where they're growing watercress for food. And one of the benefits about this is that the uh, tilapia will fertilize the watercress with their, with their effluent and also uh, they will um, some species of them will also um, eat some of the insect pests that would be part of the uh, uh, problem, so they release the need for insecticides and the like. Uh, mussels and sea cucumbers is one that um, has been talked about here in New Zealand. Uh, this, the mussels will obviously put out a lot of uh, excrement which winds up on the seafloor underneath it and sea cucumbers like to eat that sort of organic material and graze on it and grow on the uh, the not only the the excrement but also the algae that's grow or the uh, sort of the bacteria that are growing on it and so if you, if you could cage sea cucumbers underneath mussel farms you might be able to get a, a crop out of that and then carp and rice patties very similar to the tilapia and watercress all right so in 2000 12, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, um, there were 66.6 .6 million tons produced of my aquaculture, which is nearly 20% of the total. Of, oh, sorry, that is, and that is 20, nearly 20%, 17.5% of all of the marine species that have been grown of the total weight of marine fisheries okay, production. And if you look at inland and freshwater fisheries, um, that would be, that takes it up to 42% of the world's fisheries production. So uh, if you, what we're doing is we're creeping up close to half of all fisheries production is not from wild caught fish, but um, from cultured organisms. So this is actually, um, this should be two and a half, or nearly two and a half of all, of every five fish for dinner table, uh, for the dinner table worldwide is farmed in some way. So what sort of species are farmed? What are the uh, um, main species? Okay, so there are 210 species recorded that are farmed worldwide. Um, but the, the main one by far is carp. Carp is, uh, leads the uh, production of, of fisheries, of, uh, sorry, of aquacultured fish in uh, Asia and India and Africa. That is, those are the big ones. They grow uh, huge amounts of carp. And this is the type of scale that, um, that you see when you, when you look at uh, places in Asia where they've I've uh, got patties that got stretch as far as the eye can see, all irrigated by these this river system going through the middle of it. These are all filled with carp and tilapia. Tilapia are the next largest uh, fish that are cultured anywhere in the world. They're, it's a suite of species that are uh, African in origin, a type of cichlid. Um, and they are fast growing, they have a white flaky fillet, they grow in um, ver they, some very uh, uh, compromised systems, so you can grow them in very low oxygen concentrations, they're pretty tolerant of, um, of uh, being in water that's got a lot of fecal coliforms and things like that, and it's a, they're um, a very tough fish, uh, you can have them in high stocking densities, and uh, they're grown in most parts of the world, not New Zealand. Uh, there would be quite a biosecurity risk here. Um, catfish are ones that are grown around the world. They're um, in most warm water 
uh, places. Uh, the one on the right here, this is a bullhead catfish that you can find in places like Lake Taupo. Uh, people go down and spear these and, and uh, mostly they're just used as seafood or fertilizer here, but in, most, in other parts of the world these are considered to be a very, uh, very sought after fish. Um, and here's a, a plate that you get in the southern U.S. with a hush puppy and coleslaw, black eyed peas, and fried catfish. So um, catfish are extensively farmed in Asia and uh, the Americas. Uh, clams, okay, for ornamental purposes, but also um, in many places, lots of different types of clams are grown. They're often grown, uh, they're settled. Uh, the larvae are settled, grown to a certain point, and then seeded out into beds. Uh, so these are things like um, cockles and um, razor clams and cahogs and the like. Um, mussels, as we know from New Zealand, are a, a big part of uh, the aquaculture industry here in, in this country. Oysters, of course, are a big uh, aquaculture species are grown in many parts of the world, not just for food, but also for pearls all through the Pacific. Uh, Crestostria gigas is one that was a, is the Pacific oyster. It was actually an accidental introduction through ballast water in New Zealand. Um, took off, but it's actually larger than our rock oyster, so uh, now there's a $25 million industry that um, has been built up around this introduced species here in New Zealand. Uh, shrimp and prawns, this, um, uh, these ones here, this macrobranchium rosenbergii is the type that you'll find in uh, the, uh, the Tapo prawn farm. Uh, you can see these long arms and this is the uh, freshwater Asian prawn. And it can't really become a biosecurity risk here in New Zealand because the water's generally too cold unless it's in a, a place that's thermally heated. But prawns, uh, which are the, uh, well, prawns and shrimp, they're almost inter interchangeable. But they are um, freshwater and uh, marine species. Sturgeon, grown for caviar. Um, these are also grown extensively for meat in other parts of the world. Uh, it's quite common in the States. Uh, they grow these things and they, the meat is a byproduct. They're actually grown for the, uh, for the row, but uh, it's beautiful, uh, quite sticky fillet. Salmon are a big one around the world, grown in um, the Pacific Northwest of the States, uh, Northern Europe, obviously here, um, this South America, Chile, um, and really most cold water systems. Uh, also in uh, Russia, around China and Japan, all grow salmon. Um, here's one of our ex-students, a guy named Luke, who uh, is down at one of the canals in the South Island, and this is what he caught downstream of the uh, salmon farms where these really big rainbow and brown trout will sit and wait and eat the pellets that are coming downstream uh, out of the salmon farm. But he manages this this uh, place in Twizel now. Um, trout, rainbow trout, are uh, aquacultured in many places around the world now. Uh, not in New Zealand though. We've uh, decided to not allow trout to be sold uh, or cultured because we're uh, uh, protecting our recreational fishery and if people started to be able to sell these then uh, it could lead to abuses of the recreational trout fishery. And finally uh, Nemo's are ornamental fish. There are many many species of ornamental fish that are uh, cultured for ornamental sale for aquarium trade. So worldwide 210 species, 90% um, of the of what's culture that happens in Asia, including India and uh, China um, and Southeast Asia, uh, and those are generally carp is the, is the main species. Tilapia, catfish, clams, mussels, oysters, 
shrimp, sturgeon, trout, and ornamentals. Those are the, uh, the, the main species of cultured uh, fish around the world. So just a bit of review. Uh, this video we covered the definition of aquaculture, that food and agriculture organization uh, definition, which is a simple one. There'll be others, but that's a nice simple one. Um, other, some of the other definitions like uh, intensive and extensive aquaculture, know those. Uh, we, we looked at the worldwide production of um, uh, aquaculture for food and other products. And the species cultured, you should know a few of the species cultured, the ones that we looked at, which were mostly fish. There are lots of other um, algae and the like that are, that are cultured. So um, we'll see you in the next video.